Hi, my name is Preston. Hi, my name is Krista. Hi, my name is Eric, and we're in Norway. We're in Norway. Yay. <laughs> Good morning from beautiful and cold Oslo. Oslo! This is our second time in Oslo, to be honest. Our family is actually having a significant birthday this weekend. So we're only here for a couple days, but whatever free time that we have, we will do our best to make the most of it. So let's go see what we have to in the short time we have in our second visit to Oslo. Let's do it! Holmen Kolen here in Oslo, a massive ski jump not too far from downtown the host of 1952 Winter Olympics. First time staring at a massive ski jump facility. It is huge. So excited to finally check it out. With only an hour left until closing, we quickly bought our tickets and proceeded to take a rather crowded lift up to the top of the mammoth ski jump that is made of 1,000 tons of steel. Check this out. How's the view? Oh my god, it's amazing! You can see all of Oslo! Can't even imagine how you can even have the bravery, the courage to sit right there and ski down. It's so insane! So, you sit here, and then you ski down there, and then you fly into Oslo. Don't do this at home. After you soak in those amazing views of the top of home colon, you come back down into the museum where you can learn about the history of skiing from the Viking Age to polar explorations up to the present. Final thoughts, final thoughts. Absolutely amazing up here at home colon. Must do, must see. So glad this is the number one thing we did. Where are we going? We're off to have dinner at a traditional Norwegian restaurant called La Fotsua and they're renowned for having an amazing assortment of Norwegian fish dishes. Oh man. And it's actually a specialty we can also get as well, and we'll show you guys later. Within the cozy restaurant, decked out in rich fishing memorabilia, you get the sense that seafood is their specialty, especially when you see things like wolfish and seal on their menu. We dined on a seafood medley of baby shrimp and sauteed onions and garlic cooked in white wine. Most notable though was trying a rare Norwegian delicacy, whale steak. Norway is one of the few countries in the world where it's legal to eat this controversial protein. Rich in flavor, it was a rare treat to try this traditional food item. You like it? <laughs> <laughs> it's different, right? It's really good. While everyone else's dishes were beautifully arranged, it was quite a shock at first when the order Lutfisk arrived at the table. Potato salad, cheese, <laughs> and you with me? Fish. Yeah. There are two camps of people when it comes to lutefisk. Usually, a traditional dish served at Christmas time, this dried cod soaked in lye has a dreary gelatin-like consistency and rather strong smell and turns those who try it into lovers or haters. It's really good. It's really good. It's really good. After trying it alone and with the accompanying sides of pea mash and bacon oil, we discovered that the camp we fall in is those who find it to be quite the delicious treat. Oh my god, the restaurant was amazing. It was a whale of a tail of a meal. <laughs> the whale was super tender, pepper steak was gorgeous. How was your lutefisk? Oh, the lutefisk was quite the experience. It's gummy, slippery, but really good. Like, the really, really good. Is so fun. Aquavit, beer, wine, everything was amazing. Highly recommend it, guys. Go there. Next stop, let's go. First thing in the morning in Oslo, and time to get some matcha! Woo! How's the matcha? Not too bad! We ordered a creamy matcha with oat milk. It's predominantly oat milk to be honest, but at least it's warm. It's about 40 degrees 
Don't know what that is in Celsius. It's keeping my hands warm, so it's just a glorified hand warmer. Woo. We're currently on a pedestrian bridge that's gonna lead us to the brand new neighborhood called Barcode Project. The reason why the Barcode Project has its name is because when you line up the buildings next to each other, they look like the lines in a barcode. So when it's lit up or even during the day and you're in a distance and you take a look at all the buildings, you see a barcode. When you're traveling and visiting a new city, you gotta check out its pastries. We're going to Apenti Bakery. A bakery that's supposed to have delicious cinnamon rolls. Let's go. We're here at Apenti Bakery with a kennel roller. Sorry if I butcher the pronunciation. And a cup of mocha. Look how cute it is with the layers all rolled up together, like a little lock of pastry goodness. Mm. Yeah, let's go. The dough has a slight butteriness to it, but it's not flaky like what you're used to in the States. And it's not as cinnamony as you would expect it to be. It's still good. Oh, those two go so well together. The bakery was so yummy. Mm. When you go there, make sure you dip the cinnamon roll in the coffee the mocha, you're not gonna regret it. That was a great idea. Onward and upward, let's go. All right, so behind me is the Opera House here in Oslo, a really popular tourist destination, completely crowded in marble. It has over a thousand rooms. And when you're here, it is advised and encouraged to run up on the roof to get epic views of Oslo. How you doing? Just started. This is as close as you'll get to hiking in downtown Oslo. So we're at the top here, KK. We made it, and we have panoramic views of the Oslo Fjord, Oslo City Center, and you even can see Holmen Colen, the ski jump, all the way in the distance. Oh man, it's so nice up here. She got a scoot, scoot, guys. All right, you on your scooter. Come on, come on, come on. Go. Across the water from the Opera House is the Salt Project, which has food stalls, cafes, beer halls, and then also a sauna that you can go into. Fortunately, it's a little bit too cold to go into the sauna, so we're gonna skip it, but it's really nice to look at. Behind me is the Akershus Fortress, which used to protect and used to provide a residence for the royal family of Norway. Currently now it's open to the public so you can learn about the medieval history of this fortress that was built in 1290. Almost math 700 years ago. <laughs> We made it to the neighborhood of Akerbrygge and it's known for being a former site for shipbuilding uh, but now it's been redeveloped into this thriving, exciting neighborhood with food shops, cafes, bars, art museums and also home to a lot of tech companies like Google. We made our way over to the royal palace where the royal family of Norway currently resides. And one fun fact, you actually know whether or not they're at home because you can see that the flag is up. And currently there's a flag on the pole, so the family is home. We're at Vigeland Park, which is one of the largest sculpture parks in the world by a single artist. And as you can see, there's sculptors all around me, and some of them you can see are pretty interesting. So we're gonna go around and then check them out. What do you think of these art pieces so far? They are quite fascinating. I wonder what the significance of having sculptures that are predominantly nude. There are over 200 of them scattered across the park. If you guys know why they're all nude, let us know. So we thought we saw everything and then we saw this. <laughs> And 
it's Sunday, back to Oslo. Let's go. We're in the center of the Oslo station and there's eateries, cafes. But now we're in the neighborhood of Grunelokka and we're about to get some brunch with family. Tandi. Oh, we're at Got Bread. Got Bread? Is it Got Bread or God Tea Bread? Or God Tea Broad? The cozy interior highlighted the various pastries and prepared sandwiches available. What are you getting? No idea. There's so many different combinations of sandwiches you can make. Hello, hi. We have we choose a bread and then we make the sandwich. Yes. Can we try this this one? This one? Oh, uh, the next one. Here, this one. Both the dining areas in the front and back were buzzing, but we opted for the light-filled dining area in the back to nosh on our meal. Mmm, nice and fluffy. And delicious. Small pizza. What kind is it, babe? It's just everything that was over there. Ham, cheese, vegetables. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's good. That's so fresh. We're at Harold's Waffle. About to try some OG waffles, Norwegian style. Look at this, guys. Very thin Norwegian waffles. You've got the brown cheese, sour cream, and jam. This is how you're supposed to eat it here in Norway. Waffles so delicate, slightly sweet, but the real winners are the sour cream and jam working together. But that brown cheese adding that nutty, cheesy, and creamy texture. Oh, comfort food to the max. Wow, this is so good, and the waffle is really nice and warm, freshly made. We had fabulous, fabulous, fantastic waffles. Oh, they're so good. Now to get some coffee. What kind of coffee, KK? We're going to Tim Wendelbo's, which is supposedly one of the best cafes in Oslo. Best cafe, best coffee in Oslo? Oh me, oh my. Let's go. What'd you get? What'd you get? We got a macchiato with the Finca Tamana espresso from Colombia. That is a nutty, caramel, dark chocolate flavor coffee. That is good. I love how tiny the cups are. So cute. Oh, so strong, so good. Mm -hmm. After our coffee, we continued exploring and walked alongside the river Akershelva that forms a beautiful eight kilometer river walk that takes you through numerous forest areas, historical buildings, and waterfalls. We're here at Vulcan, one of our favorite places in Oslo. It's a massive, brand new development neighborhood filled with innovative buildings, apartments, and most importantly, a food hall. Let's go and see what goodies you can find. What is this place? It's a, a fish shop and they do amazing seafood. Last time we were here, we got these Alaskan king crabs or at least this bar. I hold some torfisk from Lofoten. It's dried cod that the Vikings would eat on their long voyages across the sea. Got some whale sausage. It's very good. Reindeer? Doesn't have a distinct flavor. Tastes like regular sausage. This is deer without the rain. Still nice and sausagey. Mm, deer and reindeer. Red wine sausage. That's the one. That's the best one. Mild goat cheese with truffle seaweed. Oh my goodness. Tastes like seaweed. The seaweed flavor is really nice. Mmm. Mmm. Alright, we got some gelato. Ever since Rome, we fell in love with gelato so much. But we learned gelato comes in all different types of flavors, but most importantly, quality. So, our favorite is the pistachio. Let's try it. Oh yeah, creamy. But most importantly, you can taste the pistachio, not just pure sugar. Pistachio nut flavor really comes out, and it's creamy, it's cold, it hits the spot. We're back at Grunelokka, uh, which is one of the hip neighborhoods here in Oslo, and we're off to go find some dinner. Just going to 
Oste Boutiquen. It's a cheese and wine shop and they do some good eats. At this quaint bistro with walls lined with bottles of wine and French paraphernalia, we ordered a meal to warm us right up. The romantic table could barely contain our glasses of red wine and the entrees that we ordered. We got delectable juicy mussels cooked with white wine and also enjoyed a piping hot cassoulet or sausage stew. After a full day gallivanting around Oslo, we had to check out Himcock right behind us, which is one of the 50 best bars in the world. Let's do it! The menu at Himcock is inspired by Norwegian culture. So every single cocktail uses an ingredient uh, that's special to different regions around Norway. So when you try all the cocktails, you are going on a journey learning about the history, the culture of Norway. I'm excited. Here we go, Cloudberry cocktail. It's sour but creamy at the same time. Oh, nice and sweet too. It has a really interesting flavor, but it's not too heavy. Wow, that's very good. This is the, wait, this is the tomato? That's the nothing tomato. like I envisioned it. What the heck? It's sweet, but there's a slight tomato flavor. That's amazing. Sweet, complex, best tomato cocktail ever. Oh my god. What a night. What a night. You have to go to this place. It's absolutely incredible. There's multiple stories and multiple things you can do, like a cider house and a cocktail on tap room. Cocktails. Have live music, DJ nights, depending on the day. Yeah. Visit Himcock, one of the best bars in the world. Absolutely worth it. Okay, we made it. <laughs> we ran a mile and a half in 15 minutes to make the tree. Gotta make the tree. Woo. Woo. Oh, oh things we do. Can't be late for the tree. Can't be late. We did it. When traveling and visiting any city, one of our favorite ways to get around, aside from walking, of course, and taking the public transportation, is to cycle and scoot. So here in Norway, they have loads of different brands. One of our favorites has been the Cirque here, and a couple of reasons why we like it compared to other brands is that they have really thick, big, orange, squishy tires to absorb the shocks. They even have shock absorbers in the front, which make the riding very pleasurable. And it's a great way just to see the city in a whole different perspective. It's a brand new day for us, beautiful morning. We're gonna get on these bad boys and start our day. App is open, I'm gonna click scan. I'm gonna scan right here, just like that. And then the light should turn blue here. Boom! Hold on to it, take stand off. And then, do a little kick off, throttle, and off we go. We're at Falafel Me having our first meal of the day. They only make one thing, falafel wraps just like these. Still nice and warm. We asked for everything, so falafels, peppers, tomatoes, onions, lettuce, and of course some spicy sauce, and it smells absolutely incredible. Ready? Mm. That is some good falafel. The wrap is nice and light. Falafel is really, really great with nice herby flavors, peppers, crunchiness of the onions. Oh, so good. 69 kroners, about seven US dollars for this massive wrap. I think it's a great deal. It's a great meal. Where are we now and what are we getting? We're at a donut shop called My Ugly Baby and they're supposedly some of the best donuts you can find in the city of Oslo. It's Halloween week, so they have specially themed donuts. For example, this Black Widow chocolate glaze and then we have their most popular item, the salted caramel. So I'm gonna go in for the Black Widow first. That is a fluffy, fluffy donut. Nicely fried on the back. The glaze is not too sweet, but the right amount of thickness. Mm. And now, ooh, this is super sticky. My hands have already gotten all sticky-wicky. Oh, holy crap. The purest salted caramel flavor you can ask for. Oh, and then that donut, perfectly airy. It deserves the name of the best donut place in Oslo. Mm. 
So I love fluffy donuts. These are so airy and so fluffy and on point with the flavor. Come on. That is delicious. Oh my. Wow, so cool. Right behind Ugly Baby is a beautiful little square with beautiful chairs and sofas that you can enjoy your donuts. Trying to close out her scooter here, but her phone's not working. She's a 20 year old iPhone. Located next to Oslo City Hall, make sure you check out Viking Planet, which is the first digital Viking museum in the world. As you walk into the 1600 square meter facility, you'll enter a digital portal to the Viking Age where you can firsthand experience a Viking's way of life and heritage over a thousand years ago. Fun experiences range from the world's first scripted Viking drama using virtual reality, an immersive 270 degree cinema, interactive holograms, and digital educational exhibits. We're at a lunch pit stop to get some shawarma. Mm-hmm. Mm, very good. Mm -hmm. The shawarma is nice and crispy, but so juicy at the same yeah. time. We drove 40 kilometers south to make it just in time for a beautiful evening. In Trobak. About an hour away from Oslo. Mm -hmm. And at least we're able to catch the sunset. Another delicious Norwegian meal at, at Frogner Setren. Frogner Setren, right above the ski jump. Let's try it out. Wow, look how beautiful it is, the traditional Norwegian architecture. Fantastic meal. Reindeer was so tender and so delicious with potatoes, lingonberries, how was your salmon? Oh, exquisite. It was so soft and melted in your mouth. And then you have a creamy cheese risotto with a fry soft shell crab. Just perfect. And they also had an amazing dessert menu. Unfortunately, we couldn't try it because we're too full. Come here during sunset because <laughs> you have an epic view of all of Oslo behind us. And off we go. When you're in Oslo and you want to visit as many museums and attractions that you can, the price for entry can be a little bit expensive. Therefore, we recommend getting one of these, the Oslo Pass. You can pay 445 kroner for 24 hours and you get free admission to all the museums and all the amazing sites that Oslo has to offer. And you can also ride the buses, trams, and trains as well. So, highly recommend getting this Oslo Pass if you're doing some sightseeing in the great city of Oslo. Doing? Trying to make sense of the bus routes. Trying to go to Bugdoy. Nearby Oslo Centrum Station, you can take the bus number 30, and in 20 minutes you'll arrive at Bugdoy Peninsula. We made it to Bugdoy! If you're in the mood to see some epic museums, come to Bugdoy here in Oslo. It's only 10 15 minutes away from the city center. There's a couple ways to get here. Our favorite is the ferry, which unfortunately is closed due to the winter season. It only takes 10 minutes. Number two, take the bus. Super easy, especially with the Oslo Pass. There is, I think, a little over six different museums that you can see. And we're gonna get started with the Front Museum, which is one of the best museums here in Oslo. And we'll check out a couple others. So it's a beautiful day, last day here. Let's go and get our learning on. Museum number one. Which houses the Fram ship, which was used in the polar expeditions to the South Pole. We just walked into the Fram Museum and this is what we see. <laughs> so spectacular. If a fan of the North or South Pole, allow several hours at the Fram Museum as there is a lot to take in. The museum concentrates on the roles played by legendary Norwegian explorers and scientists, including Amundsen and Nansen, who were instrumental in opening up the polar regions. It also includes three wraparound floors of displays and photographs detailing life in the Arctic and Antarctic. Standing proudly in the center is the enormous vessel Fram, where you can explore the decks and chambers to imagine what life may have been like on the polar expeditions. Next up, right across, literally, from the front door of the Front Museum is the Norwegian Maritime Museum. Located on the edge of Bugdoy Peninsula, step into the Maritime Museum to learn all about Norway's fishing and whaling industries, maritime history, shipbuilding, and underwater technology. The first boat right here, air-filled animal stomach, sewn together across rivers. 
you've come a long way. It's really fascinating seeing Norwegian maritime history, how it started from the Norwegian Viking plank boats that we're very familiar with to becoming master shipbuilders and constructing enormous cruise ships that we see now sailing the oceans. Finished museum number two. Where are we going now? We're going to the Kontiki Museum right across the street again from all the other museums. <laughs> Kontiki, Kontiki. Let's check it out. Step into the Kontiki Museum if you want to be marveled by the life's work of Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl. In 1947, together with five other people, he first crossed 4,300 miles across the Pacific Ocean from Peru to Pacific Islands in a raft constructed with balsa wood. The original Kuntiki raft used is proudly on display along with other replicas of other rafts he used in later years. All right. Museum number four, the Viking Museum, or the crown jewel of the various museums on Bogdoy. If one had to choose one museum to visit in Bogdoy, then try to get a glimpse of the world's oldest and best preserved Viking ship on display, along with many other artifacts from the area. All the ships within the museums used to be ocean-faring vessels at one point and were dug up at sites used for burial rituals of their wealthy owners. A video also plays on loop to further immerse you in the life of people who lived during the Viking era. Number five is the Norsk Folk Museum or the Norwegian Folk Museum where we often learn about Norwegian culture, heritage, and folklore. And what's interesting about this particular museum is that there are different areas all across the grounds that represent different regions of Norway. You really get a sense of the way of life in different parts of Norway in different parts of time. This is really, really cool. If you don't have a chance to travel around Norway, we were told to come here so you can kind of get a taste of life here in this beautiful country. After several hours spent visiting museums and feeling a bit chilled with the cooling weather, we ended our visit to Oslo at Koi to fill up our bellies with warm, delicious Japanese ramen. Uh, tonkatsu ramen. Look at this. Look at the soup. Look how thick it is. Oh, really nice pork flavor. Really nice and thick. Mm, it tastes all the good fat too. Oh, look at these noodles. These noodles are legit. Have a nice bounce, nice chew to it. Grabs the broth well. Not too shabby. We got another ramen because the first one was so good. And we have here the Nagoya. It's a shoyu ramen broth with minced pork meat on top. Mm, that's very nice. This particular style of noodle is more familiar with like Chinese dandan noodles. <laughs> Hot. Our Norwegian trip is finally done. Oh. It's been an epic four-day, four-night adventure in the capital of Norway. Some of our highlights were celebrating an important family member's milestone birthday in true Viking fashion with lively music performances, abundant food, drinks, merriment, and cheer. Another was the meal at Koi. It was a pleasant, unexpected surprise to discover authentic, delicious, drool-worthy ramen in the Nordics. And of course, the Viking Museum. It was so cool to see some of the world's best preserved authentic Viking ships in person. And finally, Himcock left an indelible impression with its world-class, innovative cocktails made using truly unique local Norwegian ingredients by the passionate and expert mixologist. A huge shout out to Carl and his team for their amazing hospitality. With that being said, we're so sad that we're leaving. Did so many amazing things, ate so much good food, and we can't wait to be back. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do so. And also hit the notification bell so you're notified when the next video drops. Thank you so much again. Time to go back home, and get ready for next adventure, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.